Plural Puncture What is Plural Puncture? It is a procedure where a small needle or tube is inserted into the space between the lung and chest wall to remove fluid that has accumulated around the lung. An accumulation of excess fluid between the layers of the pleura is called a pleural effusion. Indications it is indicated for the symptomatic treatment of large pleural effusions or for treatment of empyema. It is also indicated for pleural effusions of any size that require diagnostic analysis. Contraindications Bleeding disorder or anticoagulation Uncertain fluid location Minimal fluid volume Altered chest wall anatomy cellulitis or herpes zoster at the site of thoracentesis puncture, pulmonary disease severe enough to make complications life-threatening. Complications Major complications include pneumothorax, bleeding, re-expansion pulmonary edema and or hypotension, hemothorax due to damage to intercostal vessels, puncture of the spleen or liver, vasovago syncope. Procedure. It is best done with patient sitting upright and leaning slightly forward with arms supported. Recumbent or supine pleural puncture is possible but best done using ultrasonography or CT to guide the procedure. First, confirm the extent of pleural effusion by chest percussion and consider an imaging study such as bedside ultrasonography. This is recommended to reduce both the risk of pneumothorax and to increase the success of the procedure. Then select a needle insertion point in the mid scapular line at the upper border of the rib, one intercostal space below the top of effusion. The needle must be placed over the upper edge of the rib to avoid damage to the neurovascular bundle as the intercostal neurovascular bundle is located along the lower edge of each rib. Mark the insertion point and prepare the area with a skin cleansing agent such as chlorexidine and apply a sterile drape while wearing sterile gloves. Using a 25 gauge needle, place a wheel of local anesthetic over the insertion point. Switch to a larger 20 or 22 gauge needle and inject anesthetic progressively deeper until reaching the parietal pleura, which should be infiltrated the most because it is very sensitive. Continue advancing the needle until pleural fluid is aspirated and note the depth of the needle at which this occurs. Attach a large bore 16 to 19 gauge thoracentesis needle catheter device to a three-way stopcock. Place a 30 to 50 ml syringe on one port of the stopcock and attach drainage tubing to the other port. Insert the needle along the upper border of the rib while aspirating and advance it into the effusion. When fluid or blood is aspirated, insert the catheter over the needle into the pleural space and withdraw the needle, leaving the catheter in the pleural space. While preparing to insert the catheter, cover the needle opening during inspiration to prevent entry of air into the pleural space. Withdraw 30 ml of fluid into the syringe and place the fluid in appropriate tubes and bottles for testing. If a larger amount of fluid is to be drained, turn the stopcock and allow fluid to drain into a collecting bag or bottle. Alternatively, aspirate fluid using the syringe taking care to periodically release pressure on the plunger. If a large amount of fluid, for example greater than 500 ml of fluid is withdrawn, then we have to monitor the patient's symptoms and blood pressure and stop drainage if the patient develops chest pain, dyspnea or hypotension. Coughing is normal and represents lung re-expansion. When removing the catheter, remove the catheter while patient is holding his breath or expiring. Apply a sterile dressing to the insertion site. After care, a chest x-ray can be done to rule out pneumothorax, which is a complication of pleural puncture. Analgesia with oral non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs 
or acetaminophen if needed can be given. Advise patients to report any shortness of breath or chest pain.